Hello again YouTube. The last time we dealt with uh, serial logging, so this three pin connector on the cinnamon bone is serial logging, so you've got a ground pin on the left which is connected to the black of my... it's the FTDI Raspberry Pi serial cable. I think it's just marketed as, as something that to interface with the serial interface of the Raspberry Pi board. It's just handy to use. Um, yellow is the receive, orange is the transmit. Transmit. So in the past, we used the UART. Before I, I showed um, the serial login to, to actually see what the microcontroller is doing, I used this little board to create a little ad hoc serial interface with the, I think it's a JST connector on it to interface with the serial coming out of the MPPT serial charge controller. Now that serial charge controller is is very handy, convenient to interface with because it's only using a low voltage um, 3V3 as far as I remember output. But the original RS232 was a much higher voltage, so it was like a 12 volt standard. So if you get, you will get devices that will output like the standard 12 volts RS232. And if you plug them into your little 3v3 microcontroller, then you kind of, you will do damage. So I wanted to show just before I move on from, from serial, um, a little module that I've made up which addresses that problem and this little board it's very simple there's not much on it there's there is one little chip and five aluminium surface mount caps um, there's another couple of components there which I haven't soldered onto this board that's for an, another thing entirely but this is a Max 3 221E and it basically converts from I've got the data sheet here it converts from that's not it it converts from your 3V3 or 5 volts to the full RS232 12 volt. So it's kind of a level shifting of the signals. Now you could do this with obviously with MOSFETs or, or BJT transistors or something but I mean this just does everything and all it needs is the, the, the five capacitors. Now there, there's a host of different chips on the, this under this data sheet because they have a maximum of a number of different options um various various numbers of channels and various um packages as well um i'm using the ssop so this is i'm using the max 3221e um, and the circuit and everything is in the data sheet so you can see the circuit and look this is pretty much what I have here is not much more than the actual circuit that's in the in the data sheet I've soldered on a little the output here is just a three pin connector which I've got cables coming out of like so I've got a ground and then the TX and RX and this is my this is the, the transmit line coming from my microcontroller. So it would be 3v3 and it's running into the max 3221E and it's converted then out for the 12 volts or a higher voltage anyway, I'm not sure the exact um, voltage of it. So to use this, basically we, we, we have to write a just basically send out 
our serial signal that we want to send. Now the receive is also coming through this Max 3221E and back into the microcontroller. So to do this then we'll just do a, a project to test this out. Now it's, it's just as simple as, as creating a We've done this before with creating a, a serial interface. Before I do that, I want to just check that I've got the latest of this CB Getting Started project that we're working on. Now, if I do a bit branch minus L, I've only got the master branch at the minute. Um, that clears the screen. I'm never. If you do get no pager branch minus L, I'll just list it there in the in the on your terminal as it is. So I've just got a master branch. Now I don't know how familiar people are with this, but I'll, I'll check out an, another branch just for this work and check out minus B for branch, and we'll call it RS two three two. And now I've switched to another branch. Now I can make whatever changes I want to this branch. Um, branch and merge is one of the, the basically the cornerstones of Git. So now we've checked out a branch, we can mess around and make as many mistakes as we want and just delete it. So if we open this project, um, now the way I left it was. From the previous version we were just going through serial login and I want to re-enable serial login. I actually the last thing I did when I was playing about with this was I disabled serial logging and I changed the log level to warning so we'll change this back to debug. And then main.c I would have got rid of debug out of this main.c file. So I'll just re leave that defined back in so the file is debugged. And that's us. So with those changes made, I mean they're just trivial. But one of the things in a lot of projects, if you contribute to projects, they like very small changes. So that all builds, so we can now, sorry, we can see the two files have changed with a git status and then do a diff, git diff, and it will show you the change. So they are pretty simple. Um, I've commented back in serial login, sys serial login, changed the log level to debug from warning and enabled debug, file debug in main.c. So if I commit this, I'll just do, do a local so we now have committed that and if we do a git status again everything's good. So with this in mind, we've got to work with this. I want to make this a project for this max 2321E. So the pins three double two one E and there's an RX pin. And if I copy this, an RX pin, there's an invalid pin, which I'm not going to use. There's a TX pin, which I am going to use. Force on. Force off. The chip has some intelligence built in so that to enable power saving, if it doesn't detect uh, a carrier signal sort of thing on the line, it will just switch off. 
So we have to, have, if, if there's no carrier signal to get something to work, we have to actually force it on. So we'll probably be using force on. So these pins are on RD1, RD2. Six. And that's the kind of small change that and this is a good habit to get into if you're doing this um, is checking the diff for small bite sized portions and then just commit and it's very then simple to, to trace back and see what, which commit introduced a bug if there is a bug. Um, so now we have the pins, we have to initialize them. And we can get rid of all the old stuff we did. That was on the previous board we had with, we can't actually use that to light a lead because we no longer have a lead on our board. And we can get rid of the delay, not too bothered about that. Have to get rid of that. And that. And this debug. And that code, I can't even remember what that was about. Or that comment, sorry, I can't even remember what that was about. So, actually, there's another. I can't have that expiry function doing that. Messing about with the pins because. So now we have to initialize these, and I'm going to use just a, a, a header file which I haven't used yet. And I can get rid of that. Oh, sorry. There's a GPIO. In the past, I've just messed with the special function registers to configure things as input pin, pins and output pins, but there are functions in that GPIO header. And as we're going to play with a UART, we need UART.h. And to do to do something when we have an error in our code with no lead on this to light a lead so if we just spin on the spot if we define a little macro say RC check and stop and all that says is if RC is less than zero then we want to we just go into an, an infinite loop
So, for example, in this, we can do if initialization of the the library fails, then just enter an infinite loop. Now, we won't be able to see this on when we're running, but if we run this up in the debug mode using the pick kit three and it start we if, if the code stops then we can actually stop the debugger and see where it is and, and we'll know then what, what line we're stuck at and see what was the cause of the error. So So now, now that we've initialized the library, we have to initialize the pins, and we'll do that with this. this function, which is the GPIO set, and. So for example, we've defined max three double two one E or X. And we want that pin, I know these off, so the or X pin is a, obviously an input. And the function takes an initial value. It doesn't really matter for an input pin, but we'll say zero. And we can say check and stop again. So if we copy that line, I suppose we'll do these in the order that makes sense. We've got a transmit pin which is obviously a digital output. Uh, and again, we don't really care what value it is, but we'll initialize it to zero. Now the enable pin, we do care about the value. That is a, an output, but it's active low. So we have to set it to zero. If I get the, the data sheet, the enable pin is here. So for normal operation, we drive it low. It's a negative log logic signal. So we're initializing that as an output pin and we're setting it to zero. The next one on the list um, We'll take four on, and I want to set that to be high. And force off is an output pin, and we'll set that to high as well. Now that is. Because I'm not actually connecting to a device, I don't, I don't have a device here to interface with that is um, running at, at a high voltage of 12 volts in an RS-232. So so this is the thing where the, ch the to go from 3V3 to 12 volts, the little chip has uses charge pumps and they automatically switch off if they don't detect um, so basically I'm going to keep these force on high and force off high as well so that the device is forced on and it's not going to turn off smartly 
if I was connecting to a device, a real device, then I, I, I wouldn't be too interested. Now the last pin is an invalid pin and it is an input pin, but I'm not going to do much with it. Um, I'll leave it out of this code. So that all builds. So now, so now we need to enable a serial interface, and we've done this before in code. And in the example, I have the example UART code open here, and that basically defines a static data structure which we'll actually use in this and then we've got all it do, you have to do is calculate the mode of the serial so that's us there now this example uses those lat D pins again and we're not going to use so we're going to calculate the mode 8 data bits no parity 1 stop bit and you are idle high seems pretty pretty good And we'll check for an error. Um, with this time, in the past, I've only ever used a transmit, but this time we'll use. We'll use a transmit and a receive. So we'll receive data as well. 9600 looks pretty good. And we don't care when it's finished. So we'll, we'll, we'll remove that callback function and say, don't, don't care when the transmitter is finished. We'll just keep using it. Um, so we're never going to release this. So now, because I'm receiving another member of this UART structure is process a received character so it's a pointer to a function that processes a received character and we'll just call this function rx star so now given that we need a function which is a void called rx char and it accepts a uint 8, we'll call it ch. And all we'll do is just do some, sorry, do some print out what it is. So we've got received a character. So that's the character we've received. I 
and then we reserve that UART. And again, we'll remove that and do our new check stop. So we've added our UART structure and an RX char callback and just set set up our UART data structure and reserved that channel. So So now the last piece of the puzzle is previously we had an expiry function which flashed a LED or something. This time we want to do, we'll transmit a buffer. So we need a result type and We want just UART TX buffer will do. And we need to pass that the UART that we want to transmit on the buffer. So we'll pass a test buffer and the number of characters. So if we if we just say test sorry, if we just say So that's our test buffer. So on the expiry function, we just transmit that test buffer and we'll do the check for an error. And now the timer was previously milliseconds. We won't do this every millisecond. We'll do this every 10 seconds. And repeat I think that's pretty much it do a complete build So now our last test is to actually program it. Sorry, I had a bit of a technical problem. So I've used 
I think I've used in the past um, this USB scope. Hold on. Loads of cables. This bit scope, which has probably one of the worst user interfaces I've ever worked with, but I just struggle with it every time I plug it in. I'm, I just can't use the interface. So if you plug black onto ground and A is channel A, so we'll use the oscilloscope because the voltages, I'm not sure the voltages that would be accepted by a logic probe. Excuse me. Ugh. Right. So now if we look at our output, on a bit scope there it should be on a USB right this is the bit where I get very <laughs> confused It's crashed. Sorry, after much fighting with the oscilloscope, for want of a better word, I managed to get some output. So you can see the microcontroller. This is just over a division and a half. So that's the three volts. It's two volts for division, so that's a three volt signal coming out of our microcontroller. And this, the, the green is the the resulting signal coming out of the MAX 3221E. And that is again two volts for division, so it's one, two, three, four. That says about eight volts coming out of that. But I actually think it's, it's a bit more than that, but I think it's closer to it's over 12 but then this oscilloscope is doing my head in um, so I'll leave it there the one thing I will come to is that is the oscilloscope if I go back to my if I get unplug that oscilloscope And plug in a serial login cable. So I'll get rid of this. Set speed 19 and set carrier watch off. Now I've just plugged in a pick kit 3 so that might interfere with everything. Will I take it out again? Because I don't have a device, I'm just going to twist this transmit and receive together. So it's basically a loopback test. And as you can see, we are receiving the, um, we've got the debug for, there's actually a, a, a line of debug sitting in our Libby soup 
function which should be removed from code but that is the the test that's looped back now and we're transmitting through the max 3221 and accepting it back through the receive and back into the microcontroller so that's pretty much it we're converting from uh, it's a very important thing to remember when you're interfacing with different pieces of electronics even if they're using rs232 they may have a different voltage so you may have to level shift that voltage from your 3v3 or your 5 volt microcontroller to the, the the actual voltage level that the the device under test needs to communicate um so that, given that we have now got just to finish this off i'm on a bit uh, a branch rs232 if i go back to master probably not a capital m yeah so all those changes that we've just made i can now merge them back into the master branch and we're now ahead of the upstream the github repository so i can push that back i'll actually tag this as if i tag minus l this should be episode 26 i better check that but yeah for the minute tag if i go on the pager again tag ep just to keep it in the same format episode 26 and we now want to push this back up to the the github and we'll push the tags as well sorry And that's us done. I hope I can edit this down and take out the huge chunk in the middle where I was fighting with uh, sort of an oscilloscope. Um, and that, just something to remember, voltage levels on RS-232 signals. Thanks a million for watching and see you again soon.